Right guys, in this video we're going to take a look at some of the things you can 3D print as an absolute beginner as soon as you get your machine. Mine's a Creality CR10S uh, version 2.1, the latest one out. Uh, as far as I went off the reviews of uh, the original CR10 and the CR10S, which all were amazing reviews, and mine's is no different. So we have a big bag of stuff here, let me get some stuff set out and we'll run through some of the stuff you can 3D print. It was mostly for fun and most of the stuff I built was on super speed just because it was new. And so the quality is not the absolute best as in the issues I'm having, the issues that are on them are just speed related mostly. So, but I'm sticking at full speed just now, I'm loving it. So yeah, I'll get some stuff out just now and we'll have a look. Right, now we're a bit more arranged. So, uh, like I was saying, it was to use up the filament, start getting the settings right in the machine, make sure everything was sticking and printing fine and not doing anything wrong. So most of it's just been experimental, so I was just making stuff for the kids and family and friends and stuff. So, yeah, so first up here we've got, this was glow-in-the-dark filament and made a snowflake and it actually works, has a little hole at the top here to hang it. It's Christmas of course and with it being frozen theme. So we made that, we made these cool action pliers that print in one place. So you don't add any parts or anything, all those moving parts are just made the way they are. You pick it off the plate and it's good to go. And look at the quality, like look at it, it's, well apart from this paper stuff here but it is gleaming. Looks like it's just out a packet. I love it. So we made that. We made a mobile phone holder, three position mobile phone stand holder thingy majig. And everybody loves the phone holders since they've never got them out their hands. We made a little low poly face mask. It's a ring. So yeah, we made the famous hairy lion. Which was wicked, just used a hair dryer and his hair just sank down the way it was. Wicked. Uh, these things here, so we'll start to look at the more handier things to get. So this was a carrier bag handle for a shopping bag. You know, they always cut into your fingers if it's too heavy. You know what I mean, guys, when you're carrying all the beers home. Yeah, well, these here clip around the bag so that the bag runs through this but not actually your fingers so clever yet to try it but very very clever uh, i made a clamp for holding glued parts together and you can obviously you can resize these all bigger sizes or you can make them stronger infill make them more durable we got a peppa pig what's meant to be a cookie cutter but i was using it as a toast cutter works a charm this was a test print, it's just a dragon on a column. But again, this was the Chinese SIM, the SD card print that nobody uses. And it came out lovely. In fact, I went back and tried a couple of other prints off the card, like a, these here. These came off, these came off the card, they're trippy. But yeah. They came off the test card. Little vases. Probably won't hold water, but hey, my kids like to pick the little flowers off the ground and give them to mum, so these are what they're going. Very stylish. Uh, we made a steering wheel set for a Xbox controller. It was a bit stiff, but eventually it worked a treat. All you have to do is bang a bearing on the back, just a normal skateboard bearing. And that's good. We made a bullet. Now I love this thing. I made it this size, but you can make these huge big tanks. So it's got a storage space inside and the threaded cap just screws on after about four hours. Plenty of time to catch a thief if you stole your hidden secrets. But there you go. A bullet. Love it. Love that one. The print was kind of quick, came out very neat. 
absolutely love it and it's storage then you've got the mobile phone cable the cable savers now everybody knows about the cable snapping at the charger point because you're always using it while it's charging tut tut well these are the things that save that they absolutely save it so bonus now we've got LED lights in the house which were screwed in with the rubber hangers but kids will be kids and the hangers have been well torn apart so I came across these little beauties and you can screw this up on your wall and just slip the LED light into it and it fits perfectly. Excellent design, loved that. I loved quite a lot of this stuff. Now we made one of the screw screwless geared cube. It's just lots of gears. You just twist around like a fidget toy. Love it. Everybody loves that. Then we made a low poly elephant. Turned out it was a money box. Didn't know that when I'd done it. <laughs> but I loved it so much that I went and made them a big sister. Now, I think the quality of these is cracking, but if you look closely, you'll see like echo lines. So, like up here on the trunk, I find it. I don't know. Yeah, not really seeing it here, but there's echo lines of the trunk getting smaller and smaller and smaller and fading away. That's to do with running it at high speed. So, I'm not too fussed about that. In fact, I wasn't that fussed at all. I ended up making an even bigger one. So, yeah, I absolutely love these ones, man. Excellent. So you can make these solid as well. I just that was the file I took and I absolutely loved it. Then fidget spinner, we made a X Fighter from Star Wars. I was about to say Star Trek there. With two weak points. I oversized this by one percent because that's what the person with the file said and I shouldn't have done it. I should have tried just normal first. Now it's just slightly too big, but it came out excellent. <laughs> Perfect. I've had a couple of failed prints, things that I wasn't paying attention to, like the nozzle not being clean. So as it's doing its work and it goes up a few layers, some of the gloop, shall we say, that's messed up around the nozzle is catching on supports and tugging the supports down and I'm watching it happen. I've got a bit nifty now. I can see it happening, stick my finger over by the supports and hold it until the next batch of supports sticks it to the wall again and most of the time it holds. And tape, tape, wow, the blue painter's tape, got that, it kept lifting off the bed. If it's taped over some more tape, it just lifts, so an absolute headache. But when the supports were busting, a quick rip of some tape, ball it up and just stick it roughly where the supports were. The next batch of supports comes over it again and voila, it's been working fine. Now, I went and made my little girl a wand cracking little wand but because her grandma is actually a witch I made grandma a full size one I love this it's quite heavy it's more heavy than it you would think most of the stuff's very light but yeah it's quite solid it was meant to be a pendant this one but I scaled it up by 300% and we got a full size wand so excellent gifts and cheeky ideas. Uh, we made a Mayan death skull. We oversized this, which I think I shouldn't have done, but it looks very cool. Some design all over. You're supposed to blow in here and there's meant to be a loud screaming, wailing noise coming out of it. I'll demonstrate. Mine does not do that. Cover your dog's ears. It never worked, see, you know, it would sound like a screaming, wailing ghost. And doing that up the top of a mountain, very late at night in the dark. Yeah, you could see why people would have been terrified of this. But I thought something was coming to get them. <laughs> which it was. Right, now, I moved on, I found this design, which is a pyramid. I think it's actually the Starship spaceship from Stargate, but I loved it. Love the hieroglyphs in it. It separates into a tub so you can hide stuff. 
And then I thought, hey, if I was to make it out of glow-in-the-dark stuff, I might even make this out of white, but this was because I was going to hide a light down here inside here with a wire coming out so it could light up and be like a side light. And then when you turn it off, it would just glow. And this glows a nice blue colour, so... I think it's wicked. Absolutely wicked. So I'll be keeping the white one for the light. This one will be going for a gift. And yeah, so we moved on to weaponry. Uh, we kick-started it off with a little crossbow. All you got to do is add some string on these parts here. And it's a self-auto-lock. Locks into place. You squeeze these tabs at the back here and it'll eject straight back out. Wicked little design. We made two of them already. The boys broke them pretty quick as well. I might have made them with too much infill. So I might back off in the infill and see if it gets a little more elasticity in it. And of course we made a karambit. Lovely jubbly karambit. Fits perfectly. Whoosh, whoosh. Oh yes! I have these skills! So yeah, I love the weapons, so I moved on from that and I tried to actually 3D print a real Glock. Now, it started to work until I snapped the pins off the back of the slide. I actually snapped one from the front as well, but when it was down making, slightly lifted here, so it kind of kinked up the way. And also, when I made the slide, this side lifted up a bit, and it's kind of bent it at the back. But, a few other issues happened. I didn't change some other settings, and a couple of the holes inside are blocked where they shouldn't be. But this is an actual real Glock. I 3D printed nearly every single part of it, and it nearly all worked fine. But... It's an exact, well it is the Glock, so I decided from then I would try one model because it, because of it bending away and leaving the surface, I thought I'll try another model, so I've done this one. It's the Cyberpunk 2077. Wicked, wicked model. The, the guy that does this model actually has a Patreon page, if you're part of it, he gives you a working mechanism, a slide, it cocks, it has a magazine. So I thought this was very cool. And this almost worked out to perfection as well. This part lifted, which left a little gap. I filled this with glue. And, oh yeah, this handle on this side lifted off the bed, so it's got a big slot. But I was confident enough that I had my settings down enough that I could attempt another gun. So give me a minute to get set up and I'll show you this bad boy. Right, so I come across a gun and its biggest thing about it was it had 3D printed bullets that allegedly fired out of it. Now it absolutely does, I just don't have the hardware to put it together. So this was my first experimentational gun has the magazine, which I worked out how to put the elastic band through. Just maybe cocktail sticks or something here. And it'll hold the bullets perfectly fine. The whole mechanism is legit. It does. It will work and shoot. And I will have it working and shooting, you'll see. And it'll join my big wall of trouble. But, 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 but. I got sidetracked with that and thought, well, if I don't have the hardware, let's see if there's another gun. Now, what guns do I have absolute fetishes for? And, well, I've got a 3D printer, and I've got a heavy obsession of an AR-15 assault rifle. So, yeah, you guessed it. I was like, let's just see how it will print some stuff, right? And that's what started it off. So, I printed a buffer tube. For some reason... Oh... For some reason, the stuff, the support stayed inside the threads, which really annoyed me, but I'll find my way around that. But that's a legit buffer tube in its mill spec, right? So then I thought, I need the castle nut to go with it. So I made the castle nut. And then I thought, right, I'm going to try and make an upper 
and I found this. It had the ejection port door on it. It had the the forward release. It also had the part for the charging handle up in here. You could put the rails on the top. Everything looked fine, so I printed it and thought, yes! Could you actually find a lore for that gun to print? So I found a legit lore and I printed it. Now, unfortunately, I'll let you know in a minute how this came about. Well, I can let you know now. It's because there was zero space in between the threads in here. And as I try to crank it in and crank it in, I must have put a crack in it. But there's more to it. Now I printed this and I wondered, is it a legit lore? Is it the right size? Is it the right dimensions and stuff? And check out DSL. And this says... Mm, don't know what that says. Moan Abbey or something. But very cool. And I loved it. And I tried to match this up onto the top. Now these had two pins at the bottom here. And... When I tried to sink the front and it wouldn't go and I whacked it down and smashed the pins off the back and I thought, hmm, wasn't really a good design unless it was meant to go for another upper. So since it was broke off, I, I kind of forced this together into place and tried whacking it and that's when the back split over here. And that was my first lesson in not being so rough. But... I thought, well, first we need to check, is this legit? I don't know, so I printed a trigger guard, a cool little trigger guard. And this was to go, there was two pegs coming out down here as well that I accidentally broke off when taking out the supports. I was being too fast and didn't pay attention, but so we got the trigger guard whether that's meant to go that way or the other way I'll find out I presume it's the way I had it but but yeah, I don't know we'll figure it out but then it told me that it must be the right size if this is fitting in between the two fitments that was there that has to be spot on because I pulled the little parts out and even stuck them against it and they fit perfect so I had good faith in this so I thought right I'll print up a, somebody else's upper. Now, I took this one, and this one has no forward release, and the ejection port is shortened down, and the doors are taken away. Now, when I printed this, it came up with this artifact here, which was unlucky, but turned out to be a really nice part. And I stuck it onto here, and it was, that's right, the other part had cracked and it hadn't come off yet. I'd stuck this on here and it was nearly a perfect fit. You could see the holes were just slightly covered up. And I gave it a whack and off came the back. And I was gutted. Until I sat and looked at the part. And realised that the part had major layer shift right along here. This whole section, about 8 layers high, is shifted over by about 2 millimetres. And then I noticed... The crazy stepping that's here and came to the front and realized this whole tab's moved over by a couple of mil as well which when this is like this is moving this whole section back a couple of mil that's why it cracked the back off so I stuck at it and I thought right, I'm not gonna waste any more of my silver and I've used all my black so I ordered another roll of black and because of this mistake and realising the layer shift everywhere, even on the threads, where was it? The threads were misaligned up here as well. And it actually printed diagonal on the board, on the heat bed. And when I checked online, some people were stating that it just rotate things, so maybe so they're straight across this way or straight up and down that way and don't have them sit and squint. So I tried it, and bang! It came out perfect. Only I tried it in purple, it came out absolutely perfect. No layer shift, no line moves, and I had it going this way, forward and back, like that. And it printed out perfect. So I was confident that this would fit. 
So I've got these, in fact, I pushed these in and they got jammed, but take my word for it, these fit spot on. So I'm going to remake one of these at about 80% solid out of the same colour as this, the silvery grey. And I'll remake this part knowing that it's good. But to double check before I done it, I thought, hey, why don't I make a handle? So I made a cool target handle from a file on Thingiverse. All these files are from Thingiverse. But it looked great. And it even felt great. I thought, yeah, that's nice fitting. And then I stuck my trigger guard back in to where it should be and then my finger was crushed up against the trigger guard and it wouldn't my fingers wouldn't mesh together so i upped i took the other scale which was 125 percent scale to fit bigger hands it's just slightly too big but i might end up using that i checked it fits perfectly the lines all line up it's just this back bit here juts out quite a chunk so that's where I was at and then I decided what about a foregrip so I made a foregrip skeleton foregrip absolutely cool looking thing I made mine with supports which kind of messed up a couple of bits of it and made it marked turned out you didn't need supports to make it these are slanted up so as it makes it it just cuts across layer at a time until it bridges it but I like that, so I went ahead and made the other one, the front foregrip, this, this printed nice, it looks amazing, it feels amazing, and yeah, that is one of my really good prints, I like that. All these prints can be found on Thingiverse, I'll leave links to as many as I can, and I've even got a previous video on getting the CR10, showing more links to more stuff that's here. So, I thought... Let's make a rail. And I made a rail. <laughs> I had this extra bit of Picatinny down here. It's an M-lock. And yeah, they're the right size. Like when I take this part here and slot it, it slots on absolutely fine. No issues. We've got the bolt holes lined up to tighten it up. And then I thought, yeah, that has to be, so far, my ultimate best print. It came out nice and tidy, it's rigid, it's threaded, the threads aren't filled with crappy supports, lots of rail fitments for different attachments. This is absolutely banging, and this is what's going to make the look of the gun, because we're going to have a silencer just coming out, a suppressor coming out the end here. Probably starting from inside. Honey badger look. And then I thought, right, we need to make a barrel. And the only thing I could find was this. But it fits down inside yet. Yeah, and when you actually whack it down, it wedges itself down. And I broke this one thinking I could just grab it with pliers and pull it out and ripped the bottom. Well, we actually shoved something down tap down on it first which probably broke it but yeah i'm remaking one of these as we speak and then i have other barrels from some other thing that's roughly the same size and i'll probably just join them all make sure the holes perfectly aligned lovely jubbly so these most of these parts here are a combination between an m4 machine gun and an ar-15 but yeah, this is what we got so far. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Like, yeah, I'm sure everybody wants to 3D print a gun. But yeah, I mo mostly make like rubber band guns and mechanical guns, like these things here. They all shoot rubber bands. They have like mechanisms on them. So if you take them and you shoot them, cool stuff. Oh, oh. We're dropping stuff. Right, well, we're going to go for just now because this one's been a long one. But just to show you what you can do with a 3D printer, the fun that you can have, most of the stuff, the toy stuff that you saw was just to dial in the settings and had a couple of failed prints, had a couple of things go wrong. 
Uh, my biggest point was I had I was squishing the stuff down too much so the bed was too close to the nozzle and it would lay it down but it would squeeze it right down and it would start peeling up as it passed it or later on in the print it would just unstick or it would be warping because it wasn't stuck down and it took a while to find out what the problem was and yeah, user error watch a lot of videos, read up in a lot of forums but most of your problems you can really pick out and sort straight away I've got the Creality CR10 S it's 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. As you can see, I've barely even attempted to use the build volume. Maybe this standing up. Maybe a couple other things that I've tried that need that kind of build volume. Nearly everything here that I've built, you could do on a half the size machine. So you don't need that size. But after seeing all the reviews, heard all the good stories, seen everything, not everything, but seen just an absolute ton of stuff checking up. After buying a faulty lathe, I wasn't so quick to jump into buying a faulty product, so massively good reviews, and I can't talk any better. The one I got is amazing. I've got the Ultra Base heat bed, which is a black heat bed with a Creality 3D written on it. It's more like the Ultra Base from the Anycubic. A very good machine running faultless, absolutely faultless. Now when I turn it on it's making a mad loud noise, it only lasts for about a minute or two and then it cuts off but machine runs absolutely fine and it never stops. This thing is running night and day. Night and day. I'd advise anybody at all try and get yourself a 3D printer. The spools of filament, they last ages, like well Depending on what you're doing, but you would think that it would burn through it quite quick, and it doesn't. It really doesn't. I've, I only bought one magenta, and I've got loads of stuff made of this. Loads of it. Same with the green. I've not even finished the green or the magenta yet. I've finished the black, but most of these, these are solid big clunks. Solid. And I've made all this from one roll. So, can't complain, we've got a 10 inch Riz rail. Looks absolutely wicked. Love it. And all these parts now. I need to get back inside, reset the machine because we've got other parts coming. So, keep an eye out in the next video if you're interested in seeing some crazy Scottish dude making an AR-15. This is a place to be. Bye for now guys.